Hello and welcome back to Vox Mundi and the first conversion update video. So I've decided to make this conversion a rather significant one, um, doing extensive uh, changes to the world, and thus the world will look very little like what you see right now. Because this is the raw conversion. This is what it looks like when you just convert it using the improved converter mod. Which is, uh, you know, it's not bad, but it's obvious. You can see from this screenshot here, or well, this uh, screen, that um, there are a few nations that are going to dominate everyone else. Castile, Ferrara, Great Moravia, Lithuania, Sibir, and Baghdad are going to uh, steamroll everyone else. So, I am aiming to uh, make this world into somewhat of a uh, challenge, as in the balance should be kind of like a normal 1444 start. Uh, not exactly, of course, with heavy alterations, but I, what I will do, and I will show you shortly what I've done so far, is uh, to break up uh, cultures, I will break up nations that are too big, I, I will not um, destroy any nations. I mean, for example, Great Moravia here, the undisputed leader, is going to uh, receive the HRE treatment. So they are going to have their own little version of uh, the whole Roman Empire going on. While uh, the larger nations here are definitely going to be split and borders are going to be fixed. But I will uh, make sure to not weaken nations when I do border changes. Instead, I will... Uh, think a lot about all of the changes I do. So anyway, this is um, the world as it looks, all the way down to India here. We have the Mamluks, as you can see. And uh, the religious situation looks like this. There's quite a few heresies still around. Some of them will disappear. The ones that are um, too spread out and too, um, uh, too, too small to survive, or they simply don't have a chance to flip a country, will be removed. So, um, without further ado, let me present what I've done so far. So, what have I been working on? As you can see, the map does not look like the old one. Let's start with Scandinavia. This area is uh, pretty much done, except if one of you um, viewers have a suggestion here. So, we have um, these kingdoms, we have Jämtland, we have uh, Lapland, now renamed, because they didn't own Lapland. Seriously. They, they cannot be named Lapland and not own Lapland. So I named them uh, Kyok Lochlan, which is uh, basically basically Gaelic for Scandinavia. And um, then we have Fenno Estonia, another new kingdom. It's um, in a personal union under Lithuania. Lithuania is not done, so ignore that. Um, and then we of course have Hjelland, and if we count this as Scandinavia. We do have Jaltland here, it's a Viking kingdom, and Iceland. I renamed uh, Holgaland, because Holgaland is not in Iceland, but here, and they didn't own any territory there, and they didn't even have claims. So, what have I changed here? First of all, first of all, Kriokloklan, the name change is not uh, alone. I have actually made them a new culture. They now have the Norse Gale culture that is in the same culture group as Irish and not in the same as Scandinavian because they are so different. Uh, Kriokloklan owns a whole lot of territory here to the east, but I didn't want to give Jämtland that is, that is Lappish. All of these territories are Lappish, that's what I meant to say. As you can see here, this is all the Lappish culture. In I didn't want to give Jämtland cores here because um, them having cores would just mean that their prestige would be tanked. Instead, I added cores for um, the Sapmi nation, so they can revolt from here. And I'm also considering making some kind of event that unifies Jämtland and uh, Sapmi, if all of the territory, all of the territories that are Lappish here are controlled by Lappish nations, and there are only two such nations. Tell me what you think of that idea. Anyway. I have renamed um, the Norse and uh, the Norwegians, because Norse and Norwegian was basically what was left, but they were very, very, very small. So, Skjelland here, one could argue that they 
should turn Danish, but I think not because, um, well, they never did turn Danish, and uh, why would they turn Danish when they have, uh, the, when they're the only place with Norse culture? No, instead they stay Norse. But I did make a split, though, because they are not Norse in religion, they are Polition. So, all of the Norse that are Polition turns into new Norse. And all the Norse that are um, um, of the Norse religion as well are Old Norse. I will probably rename this religion to Asatru or something to not confuse it with the actual culture. And, um, well, yeah, the, the culture situation looks like this. I did add a new culture here, because this was mainly uh, Estonian, so I merged the Estonian and uh, remaining Finnish cultures here into Fenno-Estonian, and made Fenno-Estonia the primary nation. Anyway, the religious t situation looks like this. Nothing has changed, really. I am probably going to clean up some of the heretics here, like this Iconoclast province is probably going to become Polition, and uh, maybe I'll flip a few more uh, provinces to Sunni. Not that I think it's needed. But anyway, I might even, um, actually, if um, Sutmi revolts here, they are probably going to be uh, Sunni, because almost all of this territory is. So, uh, yeah. If there should be a unification event, I'm not sure, actually. If not, but maybe not if they don't cha share a religion. Anyway, so that's Scandinavia. In the British Isles, I have removed the Castilian lands, and instead I have made this. So, we have North Anglia and we have South Anglia. This is an idea I had. Basically, South Anglia is uh, the Anglian Heptarchy, but they were severely reduced. And um, at the end there, you know that they um, actually took Valois. Valois is under a personal union with South Anglia, but South Anglia is very small, so they will probably lose the union. Though um, Valois is no longer Hellenic, it is indeed um, Cathar, because South Anglia put kings there, and seriously, there's not a single Hellenic province here. They're all down south. So, I was thinking of having a North Anglian and South Anglian uh, conflict, where the one that managed to take out the other could reform the Heptarchy. And North Anglia, before I get ahead of myself, is an Anglo-Saxon Karite nation, guaranteed and allied with Castile. South Anglia has a personal union with Valois, and uh, has Holland as a vassal. So they should be pretty evenly matched at the beginning, but if Castile breaks the alliance or the guarantee, then um, North Anglia is going to fall. Here we have uh, Cornwall, it's a uh, part of Kreuklochlan, and uh, I let them have it because it's a trade port, kind of. And uh, the same goes for this. Zealand and Antwerpen is still uh, of Kreuklochlan's uh, is part of their holdings, because it was Irish and Sunni. Uh, one of the things I did overall in the world was to flip a few cultures and religions here and there. You know, I changed them basically one for one to make sure that they were more centralized, because in EU4, um, decentralization of cultures and religions work much worse than in CK2. So I wanted to prevent that. Anyway, anyway, Antalum Faith here is um, exactly what you would expect, an Ottoman tech uh, Irish uh, sultanate here. Scotland has cores, I added Scottish cores and all of the Scottish culture provinces, so you may see um, either a Christian or more likely a Sunni uh, Scotland. I'm not sure if I'm going to remove these Christian provinces or let them have it and have um, Scotland have a chance of becoming either or. And yeah, this is the remains of uh, the Orthodoxy in England. They will probably convert that away rather quickly. Uh, here I've done a, quite a lot of work in France. One of the things I wanted to talk about here is... Um, someone suggested to me that I make like a mix culture here, and I did. And so, <clears throat> every province that was either Occitane, French, Greek, Berber, or um, Basque or Basque, or Catalan, I made into one big melting pot culture, because it was basically a mess here. And I called that culture um, a Covitavian, which is ba basically Aquitanian with um, like a Greek uh, sounding, um, or a Greek sounding version of Aquitanian. So I hope uh, that culture can be uh, 
fun. Uh, Castile is not done either, by the way. I want to split Castile into um, three kingdoms. One western part here and one eastern part because, as you can see, they have uh, some Aquitanian culture. And uh, on the left here, they have Portuguese and Andalusian. I also changed Castilian to Sephardi because um, it, it's cooler. It's still in the Castilian group, though. As you can see, they're all the same culture. So, um, this area I've worked on quite extensively. I hope this is going to be fun. Vexine is a Sultanate. They don't have any Sunni promises, though, so they, they are probably first to fall. Bourbon is uh, the Hellenic remnant of uh, France. I added a few more Hellenic promises to them, so they wouldn't uh, fall to revolt immediately. Though, I do not believe that they will survive for very long, though one can hope. And Toulouse here is kind of the same deal as uh, Vexine. They're a um, Karaite nation without any Karaite provinces. They, they were none. They didn't have any. They have one Jewish province here, and I might change that, depending on what you think. And Anjou is um, also a Sunni Sultanate in France. And to make these two last a bit longer, I made them allied to each other. So uh, they will not rival each other straight off the bat, which they did otherwise. Antalam Faith and Brittany fight over Brittany, but Brittany has cores. So uh, either they will be annexed or they will get the cores back. I also re-added the, the Breton culture. This is uh, not done. This is also going to be Breton. I think they are Breton, yeah. So I need to fix that. You know, there's many small things I need to fix. Uh, Friesland is... Um, because they, this area was still Dutch, I was actually surprised that, they, that it was. I wanted to have some Dutch nations in the game. Though they both start out as vassals, which means that uh, when they are absorbed, they can trigger the, the Netherlands Declares Independence event. Which uh, may be interesting to see, if it happens. I've not done anything to kill North Thuringia, but I have done... Well, I forgot about Provence. Provence is a remnant uh, of um, our great multi-religious republic. It's actually Yazidi, and I made it a merchant republic because we need a few republics. There were absolutely none. The republics are Provence, Messene, and uh, Shandaks here. And I might add more if you have any suggestions. You can see what, what exists here. Might make Sicily into um, a vassal republic of Baghdad. Maybe. Um, so they still have Yazidi, but they uh, only have one Yazidi province here. Th th these religions in Spain are not done, so ignore them. Uh, they will probably flip to Iconoclast if uh, the Iconoclasts rise up in revolt, because Yazidi is awful when it comes to converting. Anyway, uh, Ferrara was a bit strong, so I split them up in two, in twine, because there was a powerful Lombardic kingdom up in uh, the northwest, so I split them off uh, along this line. They are about equal in strength, and they start off allied. And I might add a royal marriage as well. And I think they have the same dynasty. Yes, they do. So they may personal union each other and then reunite as uh, some kind of mega Italian blob. So, what I spent all of today working on um, Moravia, basically. So this is um, the Holy Roman Empire. I, let me show you the Holy Roman Empire map mode. I'm actually quite proud of this area here, so if you have any suggestions for how I can improve it, please tell me. Um, basically, Moravia is the strongest nation, and they start out with Bohemia as a vassal, to ensure that they are stronger than their western neighbors here in Köln and Thuringia, even though Köln will be split. Still wanted them to be quite powerful. And the rest are uh, decently sized vassals. This Holy Roman Empire is much smaller than the vanilla one. Instead of having like 30 princes, it has, it has, it has uh, 22. And um, the trigger for a large empire has been lowered to 20. So when it goes below 20, they will lose the, the bonus from being in the Holy Roman Empire. Instead of 25, I think it is. So uh, anyway, this area was predominantly Czech in culture. What I did was um, I uh, made manual splits to the cultures. So take a look at this. Let me click on one to make it easier to see. So these are all the... Um, let's see, what kind of culture is it? It's... Uh, uh, West Slavic. West Slavic. 
So central check is basically check. Uh, by the way, before uh, looking at this, um, all of these were check before, except for the Pomeranians. Uh, so every single Pomeranian culture um, province was under um, their rule. So I made them instead of them joining the Germans, which didn't make sense at all. They instead um, are now a part of uh, the West Slavic group. The Poles were almost gone, so I added them back in. But um, seeing as they were almost gone, I made them Czechopolish instead. So um, you can see that they have a great Czech influence. The Austrians are not Germans, they are indeed Czechs as well. And then we have the Southern Czechs. These are the Avars and the Croatians and the Hungarians that merged into Southern Czech. And they have all, um, they all have different um, primary tags and stuff, so interesting stuff can happen. And here they are, as you can see. They are decently powerful, two or three provinces, some will have one. But hopefully Moravia will be strong enough to protect them. I even want to uh, make them start off with a few reforms already enacted, but I can't figure out how. If you do know that, please tell me. And, of course, it's all orthodox, but I am considering having um, a few promises be uh, Polishian here at the edge, simply because um, of Lithuanian influence, and that the area used to be Polishian. So, um, I've also done some, a few uh, border changes and color changes and stuff down here, but this area is far from done. But as you can see, Cardox is now uh, yellow, which is a beautiful color. Uh, Obale Proroka is some kind of... Um, Orange, orange, brownish color. And um, speaking of colors, I would love color suggestions for the nations because I want them to be uh, easy to tell apart. Most of them are just uh, whatever colors they converted over with. But I'd love some suggestions. For example, Fess and Castile. These colors are too similar. Dacia, Thuringia. I mean, even Schelland and Tver, one could argue, are too similar in color, and Hamadan, and uh, Sauvira, and then Damot, and Asni, and Sibir, and stuff, I mean, everything is um, too alike. So, uh, let me tell you some of my plans for future edits, and you can uh, agree or disagree. I'm going to split Köln into two, maybe make an independent Fraticelli Papacy somewhere, um, and I'm not sure if I should make it a vassal of someone, like Köln, for example. And I'm also not sure if I, if I split Köln into two. I presume I should just make them royally married and uh, allied, but not in a personal union, because then they would be too powerful too quickly. Lithuania, I am considering splitting up into uh, one Baltic part and one Eastern part, with Lithuania being like in the center with uh, modern-day Lithuania and uh, a bit more, like, make this some kind of Prussian Creole culture, and uh, this uh, based on Pecheneg Creole. Dacia as well, I'm going to uh, make something here. I actually have, see at that. This is now Vlach Pecheneg, and um, most of this is now Vlach, Pe Vlach Pecheneg. I'm considering making something Croatian down here, because this is the last Croatian-cultured uh, province in the world. Maybe add Croatian to this as well, and then add some Croatian cores or something, so it can revolt. Um, what am I thinking of? Uh, yeah, right, Sibir. Sibir is right now the absolutely most powerful nation in the world. When I uh, judge strength, I sort by total manpower, because this is what they... Or not manpower, total um, troops. Because this is uh, something that is generated when the game starts. It's not their um, maximum limit, but it's a nice representation of how strong they are. So what I want to do is have them... Every nation should have, like, um, depending on tech group, and Sibir is in uh, the Muslim tech group, they should have somewhere around, like, 28-30 thousand troops when they start. So I want to, like, sp split them off into a few vassals. So they can reabsorb them, and maybe um, an independent kingdom. And if you look here, they have uh, quite a bit of Finnish culture here. I'm probably going to merge these all into uh, Mordvin. Because there's no real reason having all of these random ones. 
also going to neaten out like the cumin culture here and stuff. But I am considering merging all of the cassaras and pechen eggs and stuff down here into like tartar, just regular tartar culture, and then making this uh, a buffer kingdom. All of this. So it's like a crescent shape here would be uh, a buffer state for Sibir. And it might even be another religion, I'm not sure, but it might be a Sunni or Zoroastrian or something. And they could like use it as a buffer state while they expand east, because of course Sibir is going to be the rush of this game. I also neatened out the borders here because they were horrible. Anyway, uh, as you can see here, there's still a lot of work to do, and I will keep on working every day until this is done or I'm satisfied with it, and I will update you uh, whenever I have made a lot of uh, major changes. But I do need your feedback, so take a look at this. Take a look at this, and take a look at this. And then you can keep on sending me those comments with suggestions, and I'll make this the greatest mod you ever saw. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon.